which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. <clears throat> the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. As we begin today on January the 30th, 2022, in Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral, we begin today with a wonderful time of celebration and prayer, moving forward in the things of God. And today, before we have our scripture and our Apostles' Creed, we're going to have prayer from our evangelist, Evangelist Doris Gregory. Evangelist Gregory, you're now on the line. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your awesomeness on today, Father God. And Father God, as we come together, Father God, as one on this line, Father God, we ask you to, Father God, to just show up and show out, Father God. We need you on today, Father God, as we never need yes, you before, Lord. Father God. We ask you right now, Father God, to just bless on today, Father God. We ask you, Father God, for miracles on today, Father God. We ask you, Lord. Father God, Heal those, Father God, that need to be healed, Father God. Lift those up, Father God, that need to be lifted on today, Father God. And Father God, you come on this morning with special prayer requests, Father God. Yes, Lord. We pray, Father God, for Cedric Ward on today, Father God. You know what he's going through, Father God. You know his condition, Father God. But he asked him for a prayer on today, Father God. Yes, Lord. We believe in, Father God, that you are going to heal his body on today, Father God. And we ask you, Father God, to look up on Pastor Stacey Andrews on today, Father God. Yes, Lord. And Father God, heal her body, Father God. You know what she's going through, Father God. And we ask you, Father God, not only them, Father God, there's many others, Father yes. God, that yes. don't even know their names, Father God. But you Jesus, know their names, Jesus. Father yes, God. We Lord. ask you to look up on them as well, Father God. And we know, Father God, that you would heal on me, Father God. Even though, Father God, you have provided us with medical teams, Father God, to provide yes. us with physicians, Father God. But it's your healing, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Healing, Father God. But you use the thing oh, as yes, Father Jesus, God. Jesus. So we thank you, Father thank God. You, thank you, Lord. Thank you for every gift, Father yes, God. Lord. God. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, and we said thank you on Thank today, you, Father Lord. God. Thank and you, Lord. And as service go on, Father God, we ask you to speak, Father God, to just look up on our pastors on today, Father In God. the name yes. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Give it to them, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to just empower them on today, Father God. Yes, Lord. Give them up, Father God. And we ask you, Father God, we pray a special prayer for him, Father God. In the name of Jesus. You know what he's going through. You know what he's already yeah. gone through, Father God. But you still look uh, and he said, every Sunday, Father God, and he's believing what he's feeling, yes, Father Lord. God. And, and you say, Father God, that we must believe in what your words say, Father God. And you believe, Father God, that you're going to do exactly what you say. You yes, do, Lord. Father God. But you have asked us, Father God, to wait upon you, Father God. Yes. Yeah. And show today how to wait, Father God. Because we want everything right now, Father God. But you already know, Father God, that the prayer has already been answered before we pray the prayer, Father yes, God. Yes, Lord. But Thank you want you, us Jesus. to have the faith in you to wait yes, for Father God yes. on you. And Father God, we ask you to look up on our apostle on today, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Today, Father God. Bless them, Father God. 
and Father God, and don't let one, Father God, be too far from when one falls, Father God. They'll be right there to catch each other, Father Yes, God. Lord. And we thank you for them on today, thank Father you, God. We praise you, Father praise God. Praise you, Lord. We magnify your holy name, Father God. Thank and we ask you, Father God, to bless this right on today. In the yes. name of Jesus. Touch him, Lord. God. In perfect peace, Father yes, God. Yes, Lord. We thank you on today, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Everyone that's on this prayer line on today, Father oh, God. God. Yes, Lord. Yes, open up our minds and open yeah. up our hearts to be receptive, Father God, to receive the word on today, Father God. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, and again, the theme for today is to advance and go forward in the midst of the crisis of life from the book of Exodus 14, 13 through 14. And today we're going to give to you our scripture found in the book of Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. And then we're going to have our Apostles' Creed, which we as a member of the body of Christ will believe that this brings us in totality with the scriptures, letting us know what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. And so today I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell, and he rose again on the third day. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting Amen, 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 amen. And as we begin to move today into this point of celebration, we want to inform each of you that today our training will be brought to us by my wife, Evangelist Francis Anderson, giving our loyal teacher who has been a beautiful person as far as ministry, Evangelist Doris Gregory, a sabbatical break, but that break is not for very long. Amen. Amen. And so today we want each of you to understand that our speakers today will be our pastors, Pastor Fur and Pastor Janelle. They're coming to us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But before they do today, we're going to have our training by our evangelist, Francis Anderson. Amen. God bless everyone. We thank God for uh, another day. I honor God for his goodness and his mercy, for his love, for his kindness, thanking God for still yet being saved and sanctified. I also give honor to my wonderful, loyal, doting companion, Apostle Anderson, to Pastors Nash, to Evangelist Gregory, to Bishop Wright, and everyone else that's on the line. It's, it's a blessing and a pleasure for me to have this opportunity uh, to teach our church school lesson on the day. Amen. The one thing that I'm missing is uh, I taught before and I'm missing the questions and the hands that generally would be raised. But I'm hoping and praying that something that will be said today that will bless you. These lessons, church school is a wonderful time because it's teaching us and gives us an opportunity to learn more about God. And we also, we always say, people always say, well, back in the day, they didn't do this and they didn't do that. Well, we have the word. What are we doing? So anyway, our lessons today is 
on and and yet i do want to back up before i go on any further i do want to go on this is just a, a brief respite for evangelist gregory just a brief respite <laughs> amen and i thank god for her i really enjoyed all the teaching but i want i just wanted to put that in again my sister <laughs> amen today's lesson is justice and the marginalized and it's coming from Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, verses 10 through 21. And the key verse is Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter and 18th verse. And it reads, But thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. Amen. So uh, some of my things may be somewhat different than Evangelist Gregory, but I ask you to pray with me and bear, bear with me. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Nash to read the introduction and the lesson context. Amen. Tell her to lift her voice. Amen. Amen. Introduction. Amen. Introduction. 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 Some things highlight holiday celebration, while others show poverty stricken individuals, including the own employee, Bob Pratt. Toward the end of the tour, Moses reveals two destitute children beneath the folds of his robe. A boy named Dick Jordan. Amen. Yes, Vivian. In two minutes, I got them work. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. And it's so, so very, very true. Amen. Uh, the definition for justice is defined as being righteous, fairness, rightfulness, reward, or penalty as deserved. And marginalized is defined, defined as to relegate or to assign to, uh, generally to an unimportant or powerless position within society or group. And I just want to say when we were physically in the building, um, think about some of your interaction you may have had with some of your brothers and sisters. Um, did you look down upon those who you knew were maybe less fortunate than you? Think about it. These lessons come to make us strong. Amen. So we're, it starts beginning the first priority, the first in our uh, study is labeled just lending. Just as they lend it during the old days, they're still lending now. Contrary to what we think, rules, laws, regulations are still needed if we are to live harmonious, harmon harmoniously among one another. We want to live at peace. We need laws. We need rules. We need regulations. And Moses was preparing them uh, for things that they should do once they entered into the promised land. And that's why pastors today need to teach, continue to teach the saints how to live a holy life. You're coming into a new way of living. They don't know how to live holy. So that's why it's important that we have to be, uh, we have to be taught. And then the people who are coming in and even the children of Israel then, they needed to have an ear to hear what Moses was saying and to do it so that they would have a, a peaceful life as they moved into the promised land. Because they were going into a land that they didn't know anything about other than the fact it was flowing with milk and honey. But what does that mean? How am I supposed to act? Amen. So last week, uh, uh, Evangelist Gregory did an awesome job of talking about the criminal justice system, which is some of the same things our system is set on. So today we're talking about the lending. Amen. And the first part under just lending is respecting the person. Verses 10 through 11 read, when thou dost lend thy brother anything, Thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. Now, this is saying when a person had a need, it wasn't the lender who was supposed to go in and, and get the pledge is called considered collateral. What are you going to give me? To, uh, to hold for the money that I'm giving you. So it wasn't the lender who was supposed to go into the man's house to select what he wanted. It was the borrower responsibility to go in. Allow that person to have, it's, uh, it's you, we, there's a humbling experience when you have to ask someone to loan you some money, but then that loaner still has a responsibility to treat that person with respect. Allow him to go in. So here Moses was teaching, to allow that person to go in and take, select the pledge he wants to give you. You don't just go in and barge and, and select what you want. And then it goes on to, for verse 12, respecting the pledge. Now you have levels of people who are uh, in need. I'll put it that way. Some all are destitute, but some may be more than others. And it said, and if the man is poor, thou shall not sleep with his pledge. And this was a situation where the person didn't have, the only thing the person had for his pledge or collateral was to give you his sleeping attire. And if we go to Leviticus 25, 25 and 35, it reads, 
And if thy brother, I hope I'm not ahead of myself. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, thou, though he be a stranger or sojourner, that he may live with thee. Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him any victuals for increase. Now, if the person was so poor, you had to take his sleeping garments, then you needed to also give it back to him in the evening. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, the other thing about lending is the lender has to have the right kind of mind. Are you boasting? You know, in the church, let me digress. In the church, sometimes you'll give somebody something and then you want to boast. Girl, I gave that sister that outfit. Well, come on now. What was your motive in giving? If you're going to boast on it, or if a saint comes to you and said, you know, can you loan me a couple of hundred dollars uh, and I'll give it back to you. You should not go around boasting that you gave that person, you loaned that person a certain amount of money. Because you really should be thankful that God has put you in a position to be able to lend. And now, and we're talking about person, we're not talking, about, we're talking about the needy, my word. The needy, not the greedy. Because some people will suffer from amnesia when they have borrowed money from you and will walk by you and, and forget that they've even borrowed it. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful in that aspect as well. But we still should respect the individual to whom money or whatever is being lended to them. Amen. Verse number 13 um, it reads, and in, and in any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment and bless thee, and it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Again, this person is so poor, the only thing he had was his sleeping raiment. But at night, because he needed this, you the, the lender had to give it back to him. And then your doing that was showing righteousness on your behalf, which is pleasing unto God. Now, I'm going to read this little comment. It says, the lender's act resulted in two outcomes. First, the borrower, the borrower would bless the lender. One could picture the borrower preparing for a good night's sleep, offering a prayer of thanksgiving to God for the lender's kindness. The fact that the lender gives it back to him because they needed it is a blessing. And, and that's what the person who is, you want that the borrower to bless you or to show appreciation. And so when you're doing that, that's pleasing unto God. And that's the ultimate goal of what we do. We want to do those things that please God. Amen. Because again, thank God you're in a position to lend and not to have to be the borrower. <laughs> Remember that, okay? Amen. Verse number 14 says, and this is about labor. We're switching on to uh, about the labor and um, there are various ways of lending. Um, and so now we're talking about work, the area of work. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy. Everybody should be treated fair. And here I want to add in those of us who are in managerial positions on jobs, it's important that we treat all of them, the saints and the sinners, justly and right. Uh -huh. 
for example, and it, and it shouldn't matter what level in management, just because a person may be doing custodial work, you should look down on them versus the ones who work in the office. All of them should be treated the same. We should all, this is how we know, this is how the saints let their light shine in ways that we treat one another. It says, then it goes on the second part of 14, it says, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers, they are in the land within thy gates. So it's, it doesn't, it, there's no, um, there's no limit on, we should only treat the saints right. We're supposed to treat everybody right. Saint and sinner. How are we going to draw sinners if we don't even treat them right? You go to work, you the supervisor, you say sanctified, filled with the mighty Holy Ghost, burning fire, but then you're treating the sinners wrong. That's not going to draw them. You, you want them to work overtime, but your friend, you tell them, oh, you can work. You, you, you don't have to work. You can go on. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Some of us uh, are in marginalized positions because of things that may have happened in our lives, but we still have to be fair. Amen. Amen. Opportune wages in verse 15. At this day, thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, it, for he is poor and seeketh his heart and setteth his heart upon it. Now, you know when it's payday, you're ready to get your money. And indeed, if the person is poor, you know, a lot of us, we've lived from paycheck to paycheck. So when it's check time, we need our money to go buy food, to get the needed groceries, to pay our bills. So you can't, they can't, you should not, uh, Moses is teaching here, don't procrastinate by holding the man's money up. He needs it. And then as, as a consequence for your holding it up, the latter part of verse 15 says, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. See, it's a sin. You have, you're holding a man's money up and you know that it's wrong. That's a sin. There are various ways we sin. Amen. Recognize, recognize, recognize. I want to stop and pose this question to you. Is the respect you offer to people poorer than you different from what you offer to those who are wealthier? Think about it. I like to do those little questions. All right. <laughs> Amen. There are things, there are many things, these, these lessons come to cause us to think about and to examine ourselves. How are we in Christ? If we, even if we hire uh, a saint or someone to come to our home and do some cleaning, if we promise them a certain thing, that's what we're supposed to do. If we say we're going to pay them, we should be punctual and faithful in paying that person exactly what we said. Don't all of a sudden have a severe case of amnesia and think it's now too much. No. Our word is our bond. And if we can't, if we, if, if a person can't trust you on your word, then that something's really wrong. And then when we go against them and not pay them, they have a right to cry out to God. Now, God has a special love in his heart for the poor, for the widows, for the orphans. When we do them wrong and they cry out against you because they don't have anybody else to cry out to. They can't cry out to the person who's supposed to give them the money because they didn't do it. So they cry out to God, have mercy on you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. So, if they, I mean, again, we, we really need to be careful how we treat one another. Amen. Amen. The next part is just community. 
and it's commanding punishment. Verse 16, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin, his own sin, his own sin. God wouldn't be a fair God if, if he, he put the sins of the fathers on the children. And, and that's why a lot of people say, some people say, well, I'm suffering because of my mother, my father. No, you suffering because you are still yet sinning. You still yet doing wrong. It's not because of your father, your mother, your grandmother. Stop blaming them. It's because of your own. When it, there's a saying, if you die and your soul is lost, it's nobody's fault but your own. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times people want to put things back on my mother, my father, uh, certain things running my family. No, sin is because you are sinning. And the day you hear his voice, you should harden not, heart not your heart. A lot of young people have gone through the church and they can tell you some of our children who've been, they, they can tell you the word, but they don't want to get saved. They don't want to walk worthy. But when something happens, what do they do? They immediately call you for prayer. Amen. Amen. And when we know as when we as parents do all we've done to teach them, that's it's the the it, the weight is not on us because you've done what you should have done in teaching your children the right way. When they go out, people should not put it on the mother, on the father. No. That child did it. They made that decision to go and to sin. Yes. Amen. Verse number 17, it says, caring for the needy. Thou shalt not pervert the, the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. Pervert means to lead astray, to corrupt, to misuse. Now, these are the marginalized. These is what would be identified as the marginalized one, the fatherless. They don't have anyone to support them, to uphold them, to, uh, to go to for any help or assistance. If we went to um, uh, Jeremiah 7 and 6, it reads, If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods your, to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave your fathers forever and ever. Again, this shows the compassion God has for the fatherless, mm -hmm. for the motherless, for the widows. And that's why even today, um, there, there, there are places set aside for widows. There are places for for the home for uh, yeah homeless and for uh, orphan children um, to be cared for. If they if they aren't cared for by the community, then they just suffer. They lack. And so I, I did a lot of that early on in my in, in my work profession, working with uh, displaced children. Um, and it's sad. So our heart should go out. Even, even sometimes when we look at those that are standing on a corner begging, we don't know what happened. If we can, yes, we should contribute. Give them a couple of dollars to buy some food. Yes, yes. Don't all, don't, don't assume that all of them are going to take that money and go buy drugs. They are in need. They're the helpless. They're the marginalized. Amen. Moving on to corporate memory, verse 18. But thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command, it says, I command thee to do this thing. See, again, we suffer from selective amnesia. They forgot that when they were in Egypt, 
the taskmasters really treated them very roughly and wrongly. And now that you have two, two, two pair of shoes and you got three dresses and you got five hats, at least five hats, and, and, and you're in your own house, now you think you're better than somebody else. You're looking down on them. But had it not been for God, where would you be? What would you have? Ha, ah, my God, my God. When we look back from where God has brought us from, we should be so happy. We should be overjoyed at being able to help the widows. The, again, and I'm not talking about the greedy people. Because there are people who will take advantage of the system. But I'm talking about those who really are truly in need and want your help and appreciate your help. But they don't want you throwing it in their face. I remember growing up, they used to have the uh, home and foreign mission, but I very seldom hear about that now in our churches because everybody's want their own money to keep it among themselves. When there are places that are definitely destitute, they we need to do what we can to help. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Amen. And we should do, because here, think about it. He says he commanded them to do these things. But this, the, the word we say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do we think about that? What if God had not stepped in? What if somebody had not stepped in and helped us when we were down and out? And now we're in a position to do better. We really should. Amen. What do you, another question I'd like to propose. What do you remember that helps you keep the Lord's commands? Mm -hmm. The latter verses is about the harvest. So here again, there were different ways that the poor could be helped during these times. And it was one, the first one is regarding grain. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in the field and hast forgotten a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And we remember the story of, of, of Ruth going into harvest. She did not, they did not have anything and her mother-in-law gave her what to do and she went and, and actually Boaz later on begin to say, purposely leave something there for the poor. Amen. That the Lord, see in the latter part of this verse, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand. How do your blessings come? It's not going to come if you're stingy. You don't want to give in. You don't want to give out. You got your hand balled up because you're trying to keep everything to yourself. When the wonderful thing I like, when God gave Moses these commands to tell the people, he not only told them what they needed to do, but he told them both the positive and negative consequences. So the consequence of blessing people is that God is going to bless you. Amen. The 21st and the 22nd verse, it says, when thou, when thou, when thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the bonds again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of the vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, and for the fatherless, and for the widow. So what he was telling these farmers, don't go and just beat it all out. Don't try to get everything out of it. Leave something for those that are going to come along the way. When we, when we walk and we live in this life, are we trying to keep everything to ourselves? Or are we willing to share? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to open up our doors sometime? Yeah, back in the day, they used to let the strangers in who sojourned. You know, what? nowadays we do have to be careful. You can't let any and everybody in your house, but you can show some compassion. And we should be showing compassion. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I want to um, 
I want to read this for you. God's love and concern for the poor and other marginalized people is evident throughout the scripture. We see that in Exodus 22, 25, Leviticus 19 and 10, Leviticus 25, uh, 35, 47 through 48, and other scriptures. During his farewell, his farewell message to the Israelites, Moses said, for the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore, I command thee saying, thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in the land. Now, while they will always be poor, we should not be at that stance where we think we will be poor always. If we do as God has blessed, he will open up mm -hmm. doors for us that we can move up the economic ladder. If the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God and we belong to God, we should get it. some of the cattle. Amen. Amen. And many more, and then more than 1,500 years later, when asked by Judas, if the perfume Mary used to anoint Jesus' feet would be better sold and given to the poor, Jesus replied, the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Certainly more than 3,500 years after Moses spoke his words, and more than 2,000 years after Jesus uttered his words, the world is still full of poor people, and it will continue to be. As Christians, or saints as I like to say, Christians, we're Christ-like. Our duty is to live respecting the dignity of the poor and to help them wherever we can. Although the laws given in our lesson text were directed to the Israelites, the principles behind them should be followed by everyone, especially by believers in Jesus Christ. It's not possible for anyone to read what God says about poor and marginalized people and not see that his heart is with them. If our Heavenly Father's compassion and loving heart leans toward the poor, certainly ours should be as well. Amen. And we know that if we have, we are born again saints. We have the fruits of the spirit. We truly have the compassion that God wants us to have for our fellow man. Again, whether he be saint or non-saint, we should show our love one to another because that's how they will know that we are the children of God. I hope that you've gotten something from this lesson and ask that you continue to keep me in your prayers as we continue this journey in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Evangelist Francis today and for the training that we've had concerning the poor. And I'm reminded today of the scripture of the Good Samaritan yes. who came along and brought help yes. and support to the Jewish yes. nation. We're looking today at things that are now moving forward in spite of how ancient they might be. The truth is still the truth. Yes, yes. And so we thank God for the word of God and we thank God for my wife today who has given us a lesson from the book of Deuteronomy, and we're looking at chapter 24. And again, I thank God for Evangelist Doris, who has given the opportunity now to rest for a moment. Evangelist <laughs> Doris, we give God glory for you today. You have rested on this day. Now, I want you to understand, those of you that are on the Facebook line, that the people that we're talking to are on a conference line and on the conference line, they cannot come on the Facebook line. But I need our pastors to know that they're going to have to speak up very loudly today in order to be heard both on the conference line and also on Facebook Live. It is important for us to understand that every ministry need to hear training and every ministry need to hear a word from the Lord. 
And so today, it is my pleasure, it is my joy to introduce to our conference line today uh, that our pastors, Pastor Fur and Pastor Janelle Nash, who are going to come to us and bring a word from the living God. Yeah. I need everyone else also to mute your phones, please. Please mute your phones because it is important for us to be able to hear yeah. what the Spirit of God yeah. is saying to us. And this is the last Sunday in the Amen. month of January. And we need to hear a word that will bring us now into the second month, which is coming down very shortly. And so today it is my pleasure to introduce my son and daughter, pastors Fur and Janelle, and they will come in the order that they desire. Welcome and speak up loudly. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Speak up just a little bit louder, baby. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know that there is no good in this. 
Mm. It shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that man should fear before him. That which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requires that which is past. Moreover, I saw unto the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of the righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my thought, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, mm -hmm. but there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Every even one thing befalleth them. As yes. the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all mm -hmm. is vanity. Yeah. All go unto one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. And for who shall bring him? after him. Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to start Amen. with um, Amen. the yeah. first verse in Ecclesiastes. And when we look at Ecclesiastes, we don't see an author. But from my study, it says that the superscription in Ecclesiastes 1 and 1 refers to Solomon. Yes. It says, the words of the priest, the son of David, the yeah. So we know that uh, it is Solomon that has written the Athene. And then that's the And we see the Athene, uh, chapter 3 and verse 1. To everything, there's a season, season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Uh -huh. And in my study, I read commentary that says, after pursuing every vanity of life, mm -hmm. that was Yes. 
Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Yes.
That's right. Come on. Amen. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and now we're going to hear from our pastor and Pastor Fer because we're also on Facebook live and want to ask you to speak up a little louder so that the people on Facebook can also hear you. This is our introduction to Pastor Fer who's coming to us now with a rhema word. Every hour. Every. Verse 11 says, 
and that every tongue should confess yes. Jesus Christ he is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. But I can speak for myself. God has brought me a mighty long way. Amen. Verse 10, and it says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, mm -hmm. and with the mouth of confession he is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Mm hmm. Do not, not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of I'm not ashamed of the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus died and he got up. Yes. Today. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 17 and 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. Life. Yes, Lord. Yes. We can call on the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. In the time of trouble, in the time of trouble, in the time of need, call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Verse 13 of Romans 10 says, For whosoever to call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Lord. 
Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's a word. Thank you. He told his apostles he did not speak on his own authority. Oh, yes. John 10, 14. I found in John 10, 14. It's when Jesus died on the cross. He was resurrected from the grave. Jesus uh -huh. spoke differently about the power and authority as he rose. Jesus yes. said to his apostles, Oh. 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 Pastor Janelle, 
again today. This is the last Sunday in the month of January, and we're looking now for the Word of God to propel us into the next month. And today we've heard in our training and we've heard in the ministry of preaching that the Spirit of God wants us to humble ourselves yeah. and be led by the Spirit of God to where he's taking us into this new month. In conclusion today, I want to thank every one of you who are on the line, both the conference line and the Facebook line. And I'm reminding you now of two passages of scripture, Psalms 104, verse 31 through 35, and Psalms 105, 1 through 10. We want to conclude with that today because our pastors and our teachers have done an excellent job. But I want you to understand that Psalms 104 and 31 says, The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Yes. He looked on the earth and it trembled. He touched the hills and they smoked. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul, praise ye the Lord. And then Psalms 105 verse 1 says, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. And that's what our teacher and our preachers have done today. They have made known the name of the Lord. And our pastor have told you that if you call on him, you will not be made ashamed. Amen. And I need you to know that Hallelujah. verse number two said, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of his wondrous works. And as we end this month, Hallelujah. this month of Yay, January, Lord. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know mm -hmm. what you've been through. Oh, I don't know what has happened in your life, but I know this. The Lord has kept us by his power. Ah, and his anointing yes, has destroyed yes, yokes yes. in our lives. And so we're to give glory to his name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. And that's what our pastors were saying to us. Pastor Janelle said, for everything, there's a season, a time to rejoice and a time not to rejoice, a time to replant and a time to pluck up. We're living now in that time where we must give God glory and honor for every situation, yeah. no matter what it is that's going on in your life. Remember, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Then eight, verse 5 says, remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and judgments of his mouth. He's kept you. Yes, He's kept yes, me yes. down through the years. The song says yes. down through the years. God has been good, good to me. us. Yes. And so our teacher and our pastors today have reminded us that we are the seed of Abraham. We are the children of God. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. But you and I both are going to go through some things. Amen. Remember now that I've always said, and I will continue to say, if you're not going through anything, you don't have anything. And so whatever it is that God has done for us, as our pastors have said, we want to be thankful. We want to be grateful. We want to acknowledge yes. that the Spirit of God is having his way. In verse number seven of 105, Psalm say, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and Israel for an everlasting covenant. I want to say to you today, I thank God for our leaders I thank God for our preachers. Thank God for our teachers. I thank God for each of you that the Spirit of God remembers what he said to you. He's going to bring you out. He's going to bring you through. And so this day, 
on the last Sunday in the month of January. I want you to understand that our pastors and our teachers want us to give praise and glory Hallelujah. to the living God. Why? Because he has done marvelous yes, things for yes, us. Yes. I don't know about you, but the Bible says the poor you have with you always, but that does not mean you are poor in spirit. spirit I need you to get a spirit of rejoicing in your Hallelujah. mind. And thank God for leaders today that have told us what we should do and how we should do it. God bless Pastor Janelle. God bless Pastor Fur. God bless Evangelist Francis and all of those that brought a word to us today. I need you to know it's time to move forward. It's time to endure. It's time to get yourself into that position yes. where you launch yes. out yes. into the things of God. This is Apostle L.A. Anderson and Evangelist Francis Pastor Fur and Pastor Janelle, and even our teacher, Evangelist Doris, on the line, bringing you to a place where we're moving forward yes. in the things of God. And so as we get ready to close today, I want to remind everybody that's on the conference line, remind everybody that's on Facebook Live, that the scriptures that we've chosen for the week coming up is found in the book of Psalms 62. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 12. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 12, my soul waiteth upon God. And then in the New Testament, we're going to read John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, free from sin and forgiven. Let me give that again. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 12, my soul waited upon God. John 8, verses 1 through 11, free from sin and forgiven. So today we're going to also give you, again, have my wife for this next week's lesson as found in the book. I'm going to let her give that to you now, Evangelist Francis. Amen. The next week's thing title is Nathan Condemns David. Nathan Condemns David. The devotional reading is found in 2 Samuel 12th chapter, 1 through 9 and 13 through 15. The devotional reading is 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9 and verses 13 through 15. The background scripture is 2 Samuel 12th chapter. And again, the theme is Nathan condemns David. God bless you. Amen. Well, here we are again on another Sunday celebration where the Spirit of God has had his way. And again, I want to thank uh, our evangelist, Evangelist Francis, and also Evangelist Doris this morning for that wonderful prayer of devotion for our pastors, Amen. Pastor Janelle and Pastor Fur. Yeah. I am very pleased that God has anointed and appointed them for this position and for the time that we're in today. I need each of you to understand that time is fleeting. And I'm going to tell you something. Every time I look around, somebody is going home. It's time for you to make sure that your families are saved, that your families know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, yeah. that your families yeah. understand that it's either going to be heaven or hell. Amen. And you need to know today on the last Amen. Sunday in January that we're moving now to a brand new month the month of February. And in order to move into that month, you need to grab a hold of what the pastors have said. Grab a hold to the season that you're in and move forward in the things of God. This has been a wonderful day, a day that the Lord has made. And again, the songwriter said, we're going to rejoice and be glad in that day. Amen. And I don't know about you now, age is catching up with us. Time is running out on us. And you need to know that you need to find yourself involved in the praise of the living God. This is the time now for us to know that God is moving on our behalf. And again, for those of you that are on the line, you're saying to uh, Apostle, bring them on camera. But the people that we're dealing with are on a conference line. And I'm dealing with you on Facebook Live. And I need you to understand one day we're going to get the mechanism together where those that are on the conference can also be on Facebook Live. And then you can see all of us at once. But as of today, you see this old man. 
Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. And I want you to understand that we're moving rapidly in this world and things are happening. And you need to be aware of the fact that no matter what's going down, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Most High God. So keep yourself available. Keep yourself alert. Stay focused and look and know that the seasons are changing. Time is moving and you need to be closer in the praise and the adoration of the Most High God. Give him glory for going through the troubles and trials that you've been through. Look back now and thank him for where he's brought you yes, from. Yes, yes, yes. This is the day that our pastors have spoke to us. This is the day that Evangelist Francis has spoke. And I thank God for also our partner in teaching Evangelist Doris. Get ready. Your sabbatical is not lasting that long. Amen. <laughs> we are in a place now to give God glory and to give God praise. To each of you, I minister to you today in the name of the Lord. I bless you and ask you now to stay with the scriptures. Read them every day. Psalm 62, 1 through 12. Psalm 62, 1 through 12. And John 8, 1 through 11. And if you find yourself in the word of God every day, you will find yourself moving into the light and out of darkness. This is the apostle L.A. Anderson and evangelist Francis Anderson, along with our pastors today, to say to each of you, be blessed and the Lord God go with you. The Lord God stand beside you. The Lord God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Again, this is the apostle L.A. Anderson saying, as I always say, go with 